Breaking news from around your world on this Tuesday, August 6th, 2019. I'm Larry Rice. North Korea fired missiles into the sea off its east coast for the fourth time in less than two weeks, as Pyongyang warned that hostile moves against it have reached the danger line. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said two short-range ballistic missiles were fired from North Korea's west coast, about 125 kilometers southwest of Pyongyang. The missiles flew about 450 kilometers and reached an altitude of 37 kilometers. A South Korean military expert said the latest launch area was significant because the flight path meant that all of South Korea was in range of such missiles. The North, criticizing the U.S.-South Korean drills and their use of high-tech weapons, has fired a series of missiles and rockets since its leader Kim Jong-un and President Donald Trump agreed at a June 30th meeting to revive stalled denuclearization talks. North Korea has said it is committed to diplomacy and it will wait until the end of the year for the United States to soften its policy of sanctions and political pressure over Pyongyang's nuclear weapons and ballistic missile programs. But if Washington and Seoul disregard North Korea's repeated warnings, a North Korean foreign ministry spokesman said, we will make them pay a heavy price. Meanwhile, a new United Nations report states that North Korea is using widespread and increasingly sophisticated cyber attacks to steal money to fund its weapons of mass destruction programs. The confidential report, compiled by a group of independent experts and obtained by Reuters on Monday, was submitted last week to the U.N. Security Council's North Korea Sanctions Committee. The report said that by stealing money from banks and cryptocurrency exchanges, North Korea has brought in an estimated $2 billion. Reuters reports the attacks are becoming harder to trace, and the experts are investigating at least 35 incidents in 17 countries. These cyber actors are reportedly operating under the direction of the RGB, or Reconnaissance General Bureau, North Korea's top military intelligence agency. The trade war between the United States and China escalated Monday when the U.S. Treasury Department designated China a currency manipulator after Beijing allowed its currency to slide to its lowest level in a decade. It's been 25 years since the United States last designated China a currency manipulator. The People's Bank of China, the country's central bank, said the yuan dropped due to President Trump's unilateralism and trade protectionism measures and the imposition of increased tariffs on China. Monday was rough for America's three top stock indices, with the Dow Jones Industrial Average, NASDAQ Composite and S&P 500 all seeing their biggest percentage drops of 2019 due to tensions between the U.S. and China. President Trump issued an executive order freezing all U.S.-based assets of Venezuela's government, sharply escalating economic measures aimed at removing President Nicolas Maduro from power. The executive order immediately applies to all property and assets of Venezuela's government and its officials, prohibits any U.S. companies or individuals from dealing with them, and threatens retaliation for any foreign company or individual that does business with them. Currently, China and Russia conduct significant business with Venezuela. Under the new order, Venezuela joins Cuba, Iran, North Korea, and Syria as the only countries under full U.S. embargo. Maduro accused the U.S. of trying to sabotage ongoing talks with the opposition sponsored by Finland. A Florida man who mailed pipes filled with explosives to prominent Democrats and critics of President Donald Trump was sentenced to 20 years in prison Monday. Cesar Sayoc sent packages to Democratic politicians and news organizations in October 2018 and pleaded guilty to 65 counts and to sending the packages. Prosecutors had asked the judge to sentence the 57-year-old to life in prison, while Sayoc's lawyers had sought a sentence of 10 years plus one month. Sayoc was living in a van at the time of his arrest last year. Sayoc sent packages containing pipes stuffed with explosives, wires, and alarm clocks to 16 intended targets, including former President Barack Obama, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, U.S. Senators Cory Booker and Kamala Harris, and others. 
All of the devices were intercepted and none exploded. A report by federal investigators concluded they had no mechanism to trigger an explosion and would not have functioned as designed. Prosecutors argue that Sayok nonetheless meant to injure his targets, while his lawyers said he meant only to inspire fear. Authorities in Minnesota charged R&B singer R. Kelly with two prostitution and solicitation charges. This came in connection with a 2001 incident in which Kelly allegedly paid an underage girl he met at a concert $200 to come back to his hotel room and take off her clothes. Kelly was charged in February with 10 counts of aggravated criminal sexual abuse and in July was arrested on federal charges over his alleged abuse of underage girls. Kelly, who was recently denied bail in New York, has rejected the allegations and his attorney on Monday called the new Minnesota charges beyond absurd. Hennepin County Attorney Michael Freeman said, we're going to make sure that justice is done in Minnesota. Tropical Storm Francisco threatens South Korea with heavy rainfall after making landfall in southern Japan on Tuesday morning as a potent typhoon. The storm then made a second landfall near Busan, South Korea, Tuesday night. Francisco formed over the open waters of the West Pacific on Friday and slowly strengthened into a typhoon by Monday afternoon before weakening into a tropical storm as it crossed Kyushu Tuesday. Francisco injured at least two people and caused significant travel disruptions, according to the Japan Times. A peak wind of about 89 miles per hour was reported in Miyazaki, a new record for the month of August. Travel was hampered with more than 200 flights canceled across southern Japan. Kyushu Railway was also forced to cancel service across many of its lines. Wind gusts of 40 to 60 miles per hour are possible across eastern South Korea into Wednesday. These winds will be capable of causing some damage to trees and could result in local power outages. Francisco will weaken as it moves across South Korea, but is expected to remain a tropical storm as it moves into the Sea of Japan late Wednesday. A sharp turn toward the northeast will then take the storm near or over Hokkaido, Japan, as a tropical rainstorm later this week. South Korea's Maritime Ministry has issued an alert as a rising number of Nomura's jellyfish are being located near the coasts of major cities, including Busan and Ulsan. Nomura's jellyfish, a giant species that can grow up to nearly seven feet in diameter and resides primarily in waters between China and Japan, are invading the South Korean coast as extreme summer heat continues to affect the region. South Korea's National Fisheries Research and Development Institute confirmed on August 1st the jellyfish, which can sometimes cause death by venomous tentacles, was expanding rapidly near Busan, South Korea's second largest city. The jellyfish in Korean waters originated from the coastal regions of China and began appearing in large numbers in the East China Sea in May, then migrating to South Korea's Jeju Island in July. Yonhap reported that South Korea issued the alert after the population density of Nomura's jellyfish reached one per 100 square meters of water. Seoul's maritime agency said it is doing its best to prevent accidents in a quick and timely manner during the country's beach season. Gannett, publisher of USA Today and one of the largest newspaper companies in the United States, is being acquired by Gatehouse Media in a deal worth roughly $1.4 billion. The merger will create the largest U.S. newspaper company with a print circulation of $8.7 million. Combined, Gannett and Gatehouse Media will have more than 260 daily newspapers and more than 300 weeklies. Gatehouse Media is owned by the New Media Investment Group and said it will work on a digital transformation of its newspapers. The new company will operate under the Gannett name and its headquarters will remain in McLean, Virginia. Toni Morrison, whose 1987 novel Beloved, about a runaway slave, won a Pulitzer Prize and contributed to a body of work that made her the first black woman to be presented the Nobel Prize in Literature, has died at the age of 88. The Washington Post reports she died on Monday at a New York hospital. Morrison was a commercial as well as critical success, drawing praise for writing in a vivid lyrical style while assessing issues of race, gender, and love in American society. 
Beloved was set during the Civil War and based on the true story of Seth, a woman who killed her two-year-old daughter to spare her from slavery. The woman was captured before she could kill herself, and the child's ghost visits her mother. The book was made into a movie starring Oprah Winfrey, who co-produced it, and Danny Glover. In 2012, Morrison was given the Presidential Medal of Freedom by Barack Obama, who called her a national treasure. In honoring her with its Literature Prize in 1993, the Nobel Organization said Morrison's novels were characterized by visionary force and poetic import, while giving life to an essential aspect of American reality. And that's your update for this Tuesday, August 6th, 2019. I'm Larry Rice. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.